Welcome back to The Maths Guy. Today we are on lesson four of our 10 lesson series and we're starting our work on fractions. So let's begin. Today we are going to be looking at equivalent fractions together and we've got these four questions. But the first thing we need to think about is what is an equivalent fraction? So I want to show you this chocolate bar. Now, I could chop this chocolate bar into halves and I could offer you this one half here and you would get one half. Or I could give you the same value but I could give you these two quarters. So here we have two quarters. But it has the same value. So just because it looks different, this two quarters is the same value as one half. And therefore that makes it an equivalent fraction. So an equivalent fraction is basically just a fraction that looks different, which has been split differently, but has the same value. Okay, so let's have a look at question one together then and let's see what we need to do to answer this. So we're gonna look at question one, we're gonna look at this one half, okay? And let's have a look at trying to find some fractions for it, some equivalent fractions for it. And we have these three steps. We have step one, which is to multiply or divide. Then we have step two, which is to multiply the denominator. And then we have step three, multiply the numerator by the same amount. So what is a denominator and a numerator? Well, the denominator is this digit under the bottom. So this would be the denominator. And the numerator is this one at the top. This is the numerator. Okay? Now the denominator is showing you how many your item has been split into. So if we go back to our chocolate bar, our chocolate bar has been split into two, so our denominator is two. And then the numerator, the top number, refers to how many you're getting. So if we have one half here, we have one, and then over here we have another one half. Okay? So let's begin, and let's follow our steps. So step one says multiply and divide. Well, what does that mean? It means that multiplying and dividing is what we're going to do to find an equivalent fraction. But what I can see here is that we can't divide because one cannot be divided. So we're going to have to multiply. So I've done step one. I've decided I'm going to multiply. And then it says step two, multiply the denominator. So I'm going to pick my denominator here and I'm going to multiply it by something. For example, multiply it by two. 2 times 2 equals 4. Then it says step 3, multiply the numerator by the same amount. So I need to, whatever I've done to the bottom, I'm going to do to the top. Whatever I've done to the denominator, I'm going to do to the numerator. I times the denominator by 2, therefore I need to times the numerator by 2 to keep it the same value. And 1 times 2 is 2. Okay, and what do we see here? Well, we see that we have a 1 half being the same equivalent value as two quarters. And we saw that earlier, didn't we? One half is the same as two quarters. So we know that's right. Let's do another one. Let's times it by 10. So again, I'm gonna multiply, but this time I'm gonna multiply by 10. Two times 10 is 20. And then whatever I've done to the denominator, I need to do to the numerator. So I'm gonna times the numerator by 10. 1 times 10 is 10. Therefore, 10 twentieths is an equivalent fraction to 1 half. And I could do this forever. There's an unlimited amount of times that I could find an equivalent fraction, depending on the numbers I multiply it by. Let's multiply it by 5. 2 times 5 is 10. Multiply 1 by 5 is 5. 5 tenths is an equivalent fraction. Okay, let's pick a different question. Let's pick a harder one. Let's have a look at 4 sixteenths, okay? So, same steps. I'm gonna choose whether I multiply or divide. Then I'm gonna multiply the denominator, and then I'm gonna multiply the numerator by the same amount, or divide, okay? But in this case, my step two and step three might be divide instead of multiply. So let's have a look. Now I have 4 sixteenths. Now I can see straight away that I can divide if I wanted to because I can divide the number four. 
I know that, for example, 4 could be divided by 2. And I'm going to start again with my denominator, and I'm going to divide by 2. 16 divided by 2 is 8. And remember, whatever I do to the denominator, I have to now do to the numerator. So 4 divided by 2 is 2. So 2 eighths are the same as 4 sixteenths, same value. We're going to get our chocolate bar and cut it up. Having 4 sixteenths of it would be the same as having 2 eighths of it. Okay, let's do another one, because I can see another division 1 in here as well. I could divide by 4. So let's do 16 divided by 4 is 4, and 1 divided by 4 is 1. 1 quarter. So 4 sixteenths is actually an equivalent fraction to 1 quarter. And we call this equivalent fraction here the simplified version, because this is its lowest form. These are the smallest numbers, the smallest digits that we can use in this fraction to show its equivalent value, 1 quarter. So this is how we really want to see all of our fractions in the equivalent form. Let's do one more where we multiply. Let's do a crazy one. Let's multiply by a million. Crazy. Okay, so 16 times a million is 16 million. And 4 times a million is 4 million. So 4 million sixteen millionths is an equivalent fraction. Looks pretty crazy though, right? Well, that's because it's got huge digits. But don't forget, it's the same value. You might look at that and think, well, I'm going to get loads of that chocolate bar. But actually, you're going to get exactly the same amount because the chocolate bar has been now split into 16 million pieces. You're going to get 4 million of them, but each one is going to be tiny. OK, let's look at another one. Let's have a look at one like this because this is what you might see sometimes. You might see an equivalent fraction where they already give you the denominator. So let's see how we solve this one then. Now, we're going to have slightly different steps this time. First, we're going to find the connection between the denominators. Then we're going to find the multiple or the divisor, and then we're going to multiply the numerator by that same amount. So first of all, we're looking for the connection. Well, I can see a connection straight away. I can see that 27 is in the 9 times table. How do I get from 9 to 27? 9, 18, 27. I'm going to times it by 3. And remember, what we learned from the last question, whatever we do to the denominator, we need to do to the numerator. So therefore, if I've times the denominator by 3, I need to times the numerator by 3. 3 times 3 is 9. So the answer to this question is 3 ninths is the same as saying 9 twenty-sevenths. Give ourselves a tick. Nice and simple, right? OK, let's have a look at one last one. Let's have a look at this one here. And this is slightly different. This time, we've been given the other numerator, and it's a 9. So let's see what our steps for this would be. Step one, we need to find the connection between the numerators this time. Then we find the multiple or the divisor. And then we multiply or divide the numerator by the same amount. So can we see a connection here already? Well, I think I can. I think from getting from 3 to 9 is in the 3 times table. And I can go 3, 6, 9. So again, it's multiplying by 3. So remember, whatever I've just done to the numerator, I now need to do to the denominator, step 3 times 5 by 3 is 15. 9 fifteenths are the same as 3 fifths. So a couple of things to point out at this point. Firstly, one really important rule, to make sure that we're keeping these fractions equivalent, we need to do the same process to the top as we do to the bottom. Same process to the denominator as we do to the numerator. So whatever we do to the denominator, whether we times it by a million, divide it by five, times by two, we would need to do the exact same thing to the numerator. It's really important to keep it equivalent. We need to keep those multiplications or divisions the same. That's the first thing. The second thing is, why do we even need to find out what an equivalent fraction is and how to find one? Well, we're going to get into that much more throughout this fraction series, because when we get into things like adding fractions or comparing fractions, sometimes we need to get the same denominators or numerators to help us. So finding an equivalent fraction will be what we do to help us do that. So keep that in mind for our next lesson, guys, which is going to be how to compare our fractions. Cool. Hope this has been useful to you guys. If it has, think about giving us a like and a subscribe. Check out the website, www.themathsguide.com, and we'll see you in another video.
Peace out. What's up everyone and welcome back to The Maths Guy. Today we're going to be looking at a new lesson on our fraction series. We're going to be looking at comparing fractions that have the same denominator. And we're going to be looking at these three questions here. So let's begin. So the first thing we need to think about is what is a fraction? Well, we can have two types of fractions. We can have fractions of amounts. So for example here, I have 16 basketballs. But what I could do is I could cut them in half. Therefore, half is eight, eight basketballs. Or I could cut them into a quarter and have four. So we have fractions of amounts. But we also have fractions of just one. So for example, we have one car here, but if I was to think about this wheel here, this wheel is a fraction of the car, it's a part of the whole. So the car is the whole, and this wheel is a fraction of it. And again, looking at our chocolate model, we could see this chocolate here, we could cut it into halves and make two halves, or I could cut it into quarters and have four quarters. Then when we look at a fraction itself, it will look like this. We have what's called the numerator on the top, and on the bottom we have the denominator. Now the denominator is how many your one or your group is split into. So for example here, we had our chocolate bar that was split into one, two, three, four. Therefore each quarter, the denominator is a four, to show it's been split into four. And the numerator, the number on the top, quantifies how many you're getting or how many you're considering in the question. So one quarter would look like that with one on the top. But if I had two of them, I would change that to two quarters. And again for three, I would have three quarters. Or for the whole thing, I would have four quarters or one whole. And then when we're looking to compare them, we will have these three symbols that are gonna help us do that. We have this top one, which stands for greater than. We have the middle one, which is equal to, and then we have the bottom one, which is less than. So let's see how they work. Well, if I'm saying something is greater than, I would have the bigger number or the bigger value at the start. So five, for example, is greater than two. Or I could have one half is greater than one quarter. We could have also equals. Equals would look like this. I could have one equals four quarters. A little bit like what we looked at here. Four quarters is the same as one whole. Or simply I could have two equals half of four, for example. And on the bottom one this says less than. So it means that whatever's on this side needs to be less than what's on the other side. So for example, I could say that one is less than four, or four is less than six, etc., etc. So these three symbols are what we're gonna to use to help us order and compare these fractions. One way that people like to think about this is a crocodile's mouth. Imagine this is a crocodile. The crocodile would rather eat the bigger value, the most amount of food. So if we had a five here and a two on this side, the crocodile would face and open his mouth to the biggest number or the bigger value. Okay, so let's have a look at our first question. We're gonna have a look at this one. Three ninths versus four ninths. Which one's greater? Let's have a look. So the first thing I notice is both of my denominators are the same. They're split into nine. So whatever we had, chocolate bar, quantity of people, car, we've split it evenly into nine. Now that's a really important word, evenly. We have split these in evenly, because otherwise fractions don't work. If we're uneven, fractions won't work. So everything that we're thinking about with fractions are an even share. Okay, so we split them into ninths, and my first one says I have three ninths, and my second one says I have four ninths. So which one's greater? Which would you rather have? Well, what I think helps a lot is turning this into a bar model to help us see it. So, 
I can have a look at my fractions like this. And the first one says 3 ninths. So I've chopped my chocolate bar, imagining this blue green line is my chocolate bar. I've chopped it into nine even sections. So let's do that for a second. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. And then what it's saying is, this first one, I have three ninths. So I have this one, I have this one, and I have this one. So I'm having three ninths of the chocolate bar. On my second one, again, the same value chocolate, the same amount, you can see my green lines start on the same point and end on the same point. That's really important to show that the value of the chocolate in the first place is the same. But what this one's saying is that now I have four. So let's chop it up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. But this time I'm getting four. So one, two, three, four. Now, which one would you rather have? Which is the greater value? Would you rather have three ninths of the chocolate bar and get this amount? Or would you rather have four ninths of the chocolate bar and get this amount? Well, I can see if I draw my line, the four ninth is more than the three ninths. So it looks like if the denominator is the same, then the number on the top, the numerator, the greater number, the greater digit, will be the greater value of chocolate or whatever we're splitting up. Let's see if that works for another question. Let's have a look at the second one. So now I've got three sevenths or six sevenths. Let's see which one is greater. So again, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna think about creating my model. And I'm gonna imagine I've got that chocolate bar again, but this time I'm only splitting it into seven. Let's do that. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven pieces. This top one, three sevenths, I have one, two, three, but my bottom one, Again, chopped into seven pieces, according to my denominator. But this time, I'm getting six of them. One, two, three, four, five, and six. So it's pretty obvious, isn't it, which one we'd rather have. We've got much more in this one than we have in this one. So again, the greater numerator wins, or is greater. Let's have a look at, let's have a look at our final question. Let's have a look at two-fifths versus four-fifths and see if the same rule applies. Now this time I'm going to try and do it without drawing my bar models. I'm just going to try and think through the question. So what it's saying is that my chocolate bar or whatever would have been chopped into five equal pieces. And in this one I would get two of those equal pieces, but in four-fifths I would get four of those even pieces. So what makes sense? What's logical? Well, it's logical that if I'm getting four fifths of something, that it's greater than having two fifths. So I think without having to draw my chocolate bars, I think we know that four fifths is greater than two fifths. So now let's go back and actually answer these questions using those symbols we learned earlier. So the first one said three ninths versus four ninths. Well, we agreed that four ninths was the greater value because we had four parts of nine compared to only three parts of nine. So we would write it like this. We could say four ninths is greater than three ninths. But that's not the only way I could write it, is it? Because what I could do is flip that around and I could say that three ninths is less than four ninths. And that would still be right. Let's look at our second question. Our second question said three sevenths versus six sevenths and we agreed that six sevenths would be greater. So therefore I could write six sevenths is greater than three sevenths. And I'd get that question right. Or I could write three sevenths is less than six sevenths. And that would still be right. Okay, let's do our last one. We had two fifths and four fifths. And we agreed that four fifths was greater than two fifths. Or, again, I could flip that round and say that two-fifths are less than four-fifths. And that would be right. Good job. Okay, I'm going to put three questions on the board for you. Here they are. What we're going to do is press play. And then when you think you've got an answer, I'm looking for which one is greater, the bigger value. Put the answers in the comment section. Okay, are you ready to press pause? Press pause now and put the answers in the comment section. Okay, guys, I hope this video was useful. This was looking at comparing fractions with the same denominator. If this is useful, I really would love it if you could subscribe to the channel, it really helps us out. 
and also it'll help you out because we're going to be carrying this series on and our next lesson that we're going to be looking at is comparing fractions with different denominators and that's when things can get a bit tricky so make sure you check that video out guys okay peace out for now guys bye bye Welcome back to the Maths Guy, everyone. Today's lesson is comparing fractions with different denominators. Let's start. Okay, so today we're going to be working on these three questions here. Three quarters versus four twelfths, three quarters versus four fifths, and two fifths versus one third. So let's begin, and let's begin here with three quarters versus four twelfths. So if we're going to look at three quarters versus four twelfths, what we're asking is which fraction has the greater value? So we could look at it like this and we could say that, okay, my three quarters, this is quite clearly four is our denominator. So we need to have four sections, one, two, three, four, and three being our numerator means we get three of these sections. So one, two, three. And then we can look at 4 twelfths and realize we have to have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 sections. And this way we're getting 4 of them. So on the surface it might look like 4 twelfths is greater because it looks like you're getting more. But this would not be the way to do it. This is wrong because when we're looking at comparing two fractions, unless it's a mixed number fraction, which we'll get to later, both of these fractions are fractions of 1, the same value. So when we create our bars like this, we have to have it the same length. Can't have it like this with different lengths, that would be wrong. So our bars have to be the same length. So three quarters would be one, two, three as before, but our four twelfths now would only be these small little segments. One, two, three, four. So now when we look at it, we can quite clearly see three quarters is more. But this is not a very convenient way of doing it. We need an alternative method because we can't be drawing bars all day and we might not get them very accurate without proper measurements. So we need an alternative. And that alternative is going to be this, equivalent fractions. And if you've not checked out my video on equivalent fractions, this is your time to press pause and go and watch that first because that's really important and that's what's going to help you understand this. Okay, so what is an equivalent fraction very quickly? It's a fraction that has the same value but looks different might have a different denominator and a different numerator value, but the value of the whole fractions are the same. So what we need to do to these, we can try and find an equivalent fraction of one of these to try and make it so that we have the same denominator. Because if we have the same denominator, it's going to be super easy to compare, a bit like in the previous video when we were comparing fractions with the same denominator. So now, what can we see straight away? Well, I can see that actually this 4 has a relationship with this 12. And I don't mean it's his mum, I mean it's got a mathematical relationship. What I can see is that 12 is in the four times table, because if I times four by three, I get to 12. So I'm gonna turn this into an equivalent fraction. So I'm gonna make the denominator a 12. And I realized that from getting from four to 12, I had to times by three, so therefore, as we know about equivalent fractions, whatever I do to the denominator, I also need to do to the numerator. So the three is also times by three, which would become a nine. So now my two fractions that I'm comparing are four twelfths and nine twelfths. And that's suddenly really easy, isn't it? Because I can clearly see that nine twelfths of something would have a greater value than four twelfths. And I can see that just very quickly in my bar model again. So my 9 12th would look like this. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 versus my 1, 2, 3, 4 12th. So my 9 12th is greater. So let's go back to the question. And we now know that 3 quarters is the same as 9 12th. But the question said which one is greater, 4 12th or 3 4th. So I'm going to write it like this. 3 4th is greater than four twelfths. I'm not going to put my nine twelfths because that's the equivalent fraction we made up to help us I'm using the two fractions that we started with. And now I've just used a funny little symbol, this one here. If you saw the previous video, you will realize that that means greater than, but we have three symbols that are very important when we're comparing. We have the greater than symbol, the equal to, or the less than. 
and these work a little bit like this. I'll do this very quickly. Six would be greater than three. Two would be equal to one plus one, and one is less than three. So that's just a very quick look at that. So let's keep using these symbols as we answer the next two questions. And let's start question two. We're gonna have a look at this question here, three quarters or four fifths. Again, our denominators are different, so we're gonna to need to do some magic. So what can I see here? Is there a relationship? Well, not an obvious one because five is not in the four times table or four is not in the five times table. So there's an obvious one. So I now need to find a number that would be in both of their times tables. So I'm gonna go up in a couple of their times tables and just show you a method to do this. So I could go four, eight, 12, 16, 20, 24. I'm gonna stop there for a moment. And then in my five times table, I could do five, 10, 15, 20. Oh, I see something. I have a 20 over here and I have a 20 on this side. So now I'm gonna make equivalent fractions for both of these, but with the denominator 20. Okay, well how did I get from five to 20? I have to multiply by four. So therefore I have to do the same thing to my numerator. So therefore four times four is 16. So four fifths is equivalent to 16 twentieths. Okay, well how did I get from four to 20 on this side? I had to multiply by five. Therefore I have to multiply my numerator by five. And three times five is 15. So I have 15 twentieths or 16 twentieths. So now I can see that the 16 twentieths has a greater value. So again, to answer my question, I need to write four fifths is greater than three fourths or three quarters. Okay, that was slightly harder. We had to find a common factor. Let's look at another way of doing that on question three. So question three is this one, two fifths versus one third. And what I can see straight away is I don't have that obvious relationship between the two numbers. Three is not in the five times table and five is not in the three times table. So I need to find that common factor again. What I could do is do my multiplication table all the way down until I find a common one, or I can do a little trick. I'm gonna show you a little sneaky trick here. So watch this. If I get my five and my three and I multiply them together, it gives me 15. Now, because I've multiplied them together, that 15 has to be a multiple of both of them. Therefore, 15 is a common multiple, so I can just use that. So again, let's start from here then, so I know that 15s are gonna be my denominators. Well, how did I get from three to 15? I know I multiplied it by five, so whatever I do to the bottom, I must now do to the top. The numerator times it by five, one times five, is five, so one third is equivalent to five fifteenths. Okay, well how did I get from five to 15? I multiplied by three, therefore what I did to the denominator, I now need to do to the numerator, times it by three, two times three is six. Okay, so now I'm at this point, I can clearly see again that I have six fifteenths or five fifteenths, therefore my six fifteenth has the greater value. 2 fifths has a greater value than 1 third. So I would write it like this, 2 fifths is greater than 1 third. And I'd give myself a nice big shiny gold tick. So there's a sneaky little trick, isn't there? We can look at our two fractions, and rather than trying to work out which is the, the lowest common multiple, I can just multiply them together, and it will give me a multiple that I can use. And then whatever I do to that denominator, I have to then do to the numerator. That's a really useful trick. Okay, I'm gonna give you these three questions. What I want you to do is try and work out which one has the greater value, and I want you to try and put the answers in the comment section. So press pause on the video in a moment, have a go at working them out, and then put the comments in the answer section, and I'm gonna try and mark every one. Okay guys, I hope this video has been useful to you. This is a really important stage in fractions to understand how we can use equivalent fraction to understand how to use equivalent fractions to order and compare, and it's gonna help us in the future lesson, which is gonna be adding and subtracting these fractions. So if you've enjoyed this video or it's been helpful, please think about giving it a like and subscribe. Check out our website, www.themathsguide.com, and we're gonna see you in a future video, guys. Peace out.
What is up everyone? Welcome back to the Maths Guide. Today we're going to be looking at how to convert from improper to mixed number fractions. So let's begin. Okay, we're going to be working on these three questions today and we're going to find out exactly how to convert them from these horrible looking improper fractions to a mixed number fraction. So an improper fraction looks like this where we have a larger numerator than we have denominator and a mixed number has both a whole number and a fraction a bit like this. And ideally we want our fractions to be a mixed number rather than improper. So let's find out how to do that. So if I look at this first fraction, 17 fourths, what I'm actually saying is that I have 17 quarters. So we could look at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. So I could do this bar model and draw this out every time and then I could work out that I actually have one whole, two, three, four whole, so that would be my whole number, four, and I still have one left over over here. So I have one, and what value are we working in now? We're working in quarters, so I'd have one quarter left over. So 17 fourths is the same as saying four and one quarter. Write that a bit better. But we don't want to do that every time. We don't want to have to draw out these bar models. So we need a better way. And that better way is going to be division. Okay, so what we actually have just done here is we divided our 17, our whole 17, by 4. We worked out how many 4s are in 17. We had one group, two, three, four, with one left over. So we had four remainder one. That's where we got our four whole remainder one. So let's try and do division this time then. So we've got 17 fourths, so what we know now is if I put my 17 inside my bus stop and four on the outside, how many fours are there in one? There are zero, carry the one across. How many fours are there in 17? Four, eight, 12, 16, we get four, remainder one. So I would write it as in four with one left over. But I'm not finished because what are we working in? We're working in quarters. So my answer is actually four and one fourth, four and one quarter. And I'd give myself a big tick for that question. Okay, let's have a look at our second question. We have 18 fourths. Okay, and then when working this out now, we're just going to use our division method. And I can say 18 divided by four. Okay, how many fours are there in one? We have zero, roll the one across. How many fours are there in 18? I have four again. Okay, how many left over? Well, 4 got me to 16, so I have remainder 2. So we write it 4 with 2 quarters. Nice. And I get myself another green tick. Let's have a look at our final question. 15 fifths. And this one's a little bit different, so let's have a look. So we have 15 fifths like this. And again, I can just use my bus stop method to work out the division. 15 inside, 5 on the outside. How many fives are there in one? Zero. Roll the one across. How many fives are there in 15? Three. Now we have no remainders this time. So what does this fraction look like? Well, I could simply write it like this. Three. We have three whole. If I have five fifteenths, I have three whole. And I can show that in my bar models again. I'm just gonna do a very quick bar model. One, two, Three, so I've got five, 15 fifths, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So I have a whole one, another whole one, and another whole one. One whole, two whole, three whole. Giving my answer, three whole. Okay, I hope that was useful. Here are three questions for you to have a practice at. See if you can find out the mixed number for this fraction, please. When you get an answer, put the answer in the comment section. I'm going to try and mark every single one. So three questions here. Press pause. Good luck. Okay, guys, hopefully that was useful. If it was, think about subscribing to the channel. Give us a big like. That'd be really helpful. And check out our next video where we're going to be looking at adding and subtracting fractions. So I'll see you in the next video. Peace out. Welcome back to the Maths Guy everybody and today we've got a new lesson looking at how to convert from a mixed number to an improper fraction. Let's begin. 
Okay, so today we're looking at these four questions here, and these are mixed numbers. If you were in our last lesson, you would see that we were converting from an improper fraction to a mixed number, and now we're doing the opposite way around. Okay, so let's start on our question one. Question one says three and three quarters. And now this is a mixed number because we have a whole number and we have a fraction. So how do we convert this back to an improper fraction? Well, let's dive in and look at the understanding of this before we look at the method. So three and three quarters can be represented in this bar model by having three whole, two and three, and then three quarters of another one. So then an improper fraction is basically asking how many quarters do you have but without the mixed number. So we can see here that we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, and fifteen. So therefore, this would equal fifteen fourths. And this would be the improper fraction. Now again, this is really useful to help us understand what's going on, but it's not a very practical method for us to work it out every time, so we need another way. Now our fraction that we're working with here is quarters. So we know we're going to have something quarters as our improper fraction, and the way that we can find out how many quarters we're going to have is we can simply times our 4 by our 3. And the reason that is is because, look, we have 3 whole, 2 and 3, each of these holes is split into four, so therefore if I times three times four, it's gonna give me how many quarters I have in my whole number. So the answer to three times four is 12. But I'm not finished yet because of this last three here. Now this is just three on its own, one, two, three, so therefore I need to plus three. So my fraction is 12 plus three fourths, therefore it's gonna be 15 fourths. Okay, so the answer to question one is 15 fourths. Okay, let's have a look at question two. Let's have a look at five and two thirds. So five and two thirds. Well, let's not bother building those bar models again. Let's go simply into the method. So the first question I want to ask myself is, what is my fraction? And in this case, it's thirds. So I know that my answer is going to be in thirds for the improper fraction. How many thirds do we have? Well, let's find out. How many thirds do I have in my whole? And I know now that I can just times three by five and three times five equals 15. So I have 15, but remember I'm not done because I've got this pesky little two here, and that was just gonna be added on. So 15 plus two, therefore the answer is 17 thirds. So the answer to five and two thirds is 17 thirds as an improper fraction. Now before we move on, let's just make sure that's right by flicking it back to a mixed number in the way that we learned in the previous lesson. So if you haven't learned that, go back and check that out as well. So we're gonna turn it back into a mixed number by simply dividing 17 by three. Because if you think about it, division is the inverse of multiplication, so we're gonna obviously divide at this point if we're trying to find the opposite. So how many threes are there in 17? Well, there's five, remainder, two so therefore my question so therefore my mixed number is going to be five and two thirds is that correct yes it is so we know this is right so five and two thirds is 17 thirds awesome okay let's look at question three ten and one fifth so ten and one fifth let's do this really quickly now so what we can do we know we're going to be working in fifths and we know that we can multiply our 5 times 10 is going to be 50 plus the 1 is 51. So I've got 51 fifths. Huge improper fraction there. So my answer to 10 and 1 fifths is 51 fifths. I have to give myself a tick for that question. Okay, final question, and we're going to look at question 4, 8 and 1 half. And the question is asking me, how many halves do I have? So I know that, therefore, I'm going to have halves as my denominator. And let's just simply times 8 times 2 is 16, plus my 1 is 17. So I have 17 twos. Super quick once you learn the method. But remember, the understanding of this is just as important as being able to get the correct answer. So if you didn't fully understand how I did this and how we got these improper fractions, go back to our understanding screen and see it with the bar models again. Okay, we're gonna move on to some questions of your own. I've got four questions here for you. 
press pause on the video, take some time to answer them and put your answers into the comment section and I'm going to do my best to mark every single one. So press pause now and I'll see you in a minute. Okay, I hope this video has been really helpful for you. If it has, please think about giving me a subscribe and a thumbs up. It really helps me out on this channel. And also check out my website, www.themathsguide.com, where there's going to be lots of more videos and lots of resources on there for you. But for now, peace out. Welcome back to The Maths Guy, everybody. I am Matt, The Maths Guy, and today we're looking at a new video adding fractions with the same denominator. Let's go. Okay, so adding fractions with the same denominator. This is very different to adding fractions with different denominators, which is gonna be our next lesson. But today we're looking at the same denominator. So you can see in our four questions here, all of our denominators are the same. So in two fifths and one fifths, we have five as our denominator. In three sixths, add one sixth, we have six as our denominator. And in four ninths and two ninths, we have nine. Three eighths and five eighths, we have eight. Okay, so let's first jump into our understanding stage to understand how this works before we have a go at understanding the method. So let's have a look at this first one together. Super simple question, one half and one half. Well, we know that if we add one half to one half, we should get a whole. So let's try and get to one whole in this question. So first thing we might think of doing is we might try to add our numerator and our denominator. And this is the most common mistake I see. And let's see what happens if we do that. If I add my numerator, I'll get 1 add 1 equals 2. And if I add my denominators 2 and 2, I will equal 4. Well, if I now show that in my model again, two fourths or two quarters, well, is that now not just the same as what I had? Two quarters would be one and two quarters. That looks very much like what I had before because two quarters simplified is one half. So what I'm saying here is one half add one half equals one half. Well, that sounds very wrong, doesn't it? How can one half and one half equal a half? So we can't do this. We can't add our numerator and our denominator. So we need another way. So let's look at it in a different way. And let's look at it with the bar models again. So I have two fifths and I'm adding one fifth. So in my first bar model, I can see I have one, two fifths. And in my second one, I have one fifth. So how many do I have all together? Well, I think I can answer my numerator. I have one, two, three. So I have three, but I have three what? Three what, three dogs? Three tenths, what? Well, let's think about it in this way. If I have two elephants, add one elephant, I'm gonna have three elephants. Let me draw an elephant for you. Look at that, beautiful, I should be an artist. So my answer would be three elephants. So would it not make sense if I'm adding two fifths, add one fifth, then my answer would be three fifths, because that's what my fraction represents, fifths. I have one fifth, two fifths, and I'm adding a third fifth, so I have three fifths. Because remember, the denominator, the number at the bottom, is basically the name of the fraction. What fraction are we working in? Are we working in thirds, in fifths, in eighths? And that will not change if we add fractions together. Because if I add two fifths to one fifths, I'm getting three fifths. So I keep the denominator the same when I add. I only add the numerator. So back to my questions. Two fifths add one fifths equals three fifths. And I'll give myself a nice tick. Okay, question two, three sixths add one sixth. Well, let's do it in our super quick method now. I know that I'm working with a sixth. I have a sixth here and a sixth here, so I know that my answer is gonna also be in sixths. And how many sixths do I have? Well, I have three sixths add one sixth, which equals four sixths. Let's check it with my bar model. Here we go, I'm just gonna draw a very rough one for us. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Excuse my inaccuracy. But on my first one, I have one, two, three. And in my second fraction, I only have one sixth. 
How many do I have all together? I have one, two, three, four sixths. So my answer to question two, three sixths add one sixth equals four sixths. But hold on, because I think we have a simpler form of this fraction, because I can see here that four and six has a fact has a because I can see here that four and six has a common factor of two. So if I divide four by two, I'll equal two, and then six divided by two is three. So my actual simplified answer is two thirds. Three sixths add one sixth equals two thirds. Give myself another tick. If you don't know how to simplify a fraction, I have a designated video for that on this channel, so check it out before you carry on too far with this. Okay, question three. Four ninths add two ninths. Here we go, and I'm just gonna do this in my super quick method now. So I'm adding ninths, so I have ninths, therefore my answer must be in ninths too. And I can simply add my two numerators together. Four add two equals six, six ninths. And can any of you see a common factor between my six and nine? Well done, I have three. I can divide six by three, leaving me two. And I can divide nine by three, leaving me three. So four ninths plus two ninths equals two thirds. I can put that into my answer box and give myself another tick. Now, last question here is a little bit different. I have three eighths plus five eighths. Let's have a look at it. Three eighths plus five eighths. So same thing again. I'm working in eighths. Therefore, my denominator will still be an eight. And now I can just add my two numerators. Three add five equals eight. Hmm, eight eighths. Let's have a look what that looks like in our bar model. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, so I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, I have the whole thing. So eight eighths actually equals one, or one whole. So the answer to three eighths plus five eighths actually equals one. Give myself a funky colored tick. Okay, so a few things to think about. When we add fractions with the same denominator, our denominator will stay the same because that's the fraction we're adding up in. We are adding fourths or fifths or thirds and we simply just add the numerator and then we simplify if possible. Okay, here are four questions for you to work on. Have a go at answering them and then put the four answers into the comment section and I will try and mark every single one. So press pause on the video now and I'll see you in a minute. Okay guys, well done today. I hope this video has been helpful. If it has, please consider thinking about subscribing to the channel because we're gonna be making daily videos for you. And check out the website, www.themathsguide.com for even more videos and resources. But for now, see you in another video and peace out. Welcome back to The Maths Guy. Now we are gonna look at working out how to add fractions with different denominators. Let's check it out. Okay guys, so we're working with these three questions today and the first thing I can notice is that we have now different denominators in our question. So a denominator, as we know now, is the number underneath the fraction. Our numerator is the number on the top. So as you can see in these questions, I have different denominators that I'm trying to add. I'm trying to add two thirds to four ninths, three tenths to five sixths, three eighths to two fourths. So let's jump into our understanding stage to find out the steps to solving this. So step one says find a common denominator. So we're gonna be looking at equivalent fractions. So if you haven't checked out my previous video on equivalent fractions or you don't have a good understanding of equivalent fractions, press pause on this video, go and check that out and then come back to this because equivalent fractions is something we're gonna really need to understand before we can move on with this. And then I need to rename the fraction into my new equivalent, add the numerators and simplify if needed. So let's see what that looks like. Question one says two thirds plus four ninths. So some of you straight away can look at my denominators and we can see a relationship here. And the relationship is that nine is in the three times table. So therefore I can use that knowledge to help me find an equivalent fraction. 
What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna look at this fraction here and I'm gonna try and turn it into a fraction with nine as a denominator. So how can I turn my three into a nine? Well, therefore, I'm gonna have to times by three. Turns my denominator into a nine. Good, that's a good step. But now if I've done that to my denominator, what do I now need to do to my numerator? That's right, well done. We need to times that by three also. As I say, if you don't fully understand why, go back to the equivalent fractions video to see that part. So two times three is six. So my equivalent fraction is six ninths. So now I can get rid of this fraction temporarily and simply add six ninths to four ninths. So let's do that. I'm gonna tidy it up and bring it down here. Now I can look back to the previous lesson of adding fractions with the same denominator and I realize that I'm working in ninths, so therefore my answer will still be in ninths. And all I need to do is add my numerators. Six plus four is 10. Let's check my steps. I found the common denominator. I renamed the fraction. I added the numerators and it says now simplify if needed. So can I simplify this fraction? Well, this fraction is actually an improper fraction because we have a bigger numerator than we do denominator. So I can turn this into a mixed number by dividing my 10 by nine, and that's gonna give me one and one ninth. Therefore, that is in its simplest form. Great, let's keep our understanding going here and look at this in a bar model. So originally my question said two thirds plus four ninths. So I could have done this. I could have said one, two thirds, add one, two, three, four ninths. But then you can see that this is really difficult to add up because I'm working with different volumes and different quantities that of my fraction. This is in thirds and this is in ninths. It's very hard to add a third to a ninth. So what we did is we found an equivalent fraction, the six ninths, and now it's much easier to see that when we're adding these together, we are simply adding the same quantity, the ninth, every time. So one, two, three, four, five, six, and one, two, three, four, leaving me a total of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten ninths, or one and one ninth. Great, so the answer to question one is one and one ninth. Excellent, let's have a look at question two. Three tenths add five sixths. Now this question's a little harder because we can't see a direct relationship between our two denominators. 10 is not in the six times table and six is not in the 10 times table. So we need another method now to help us find an equivalent fraction. So I'm gonna teach you a little trick. And if you saw my equivalent fraction video, you'll already know this trick, which is great. But if not, then here it is for you. Now, what we can do is we could just simply try and find a common multiple. And what I could do is do 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, and say, let's say 60. And then I'd have to do six, 12, 18. And I'm looking for ones that match. No, none so far, 24, 30, 36, 42, 48, 54, 60. Ah, look what I found. I have found a common multiple, 60. So now I can turn my two fractions into a fraction with 60 as a denominator. So I'm actually finding equivalents for both of these fractions now. But I want you to think about something. We've just had to do this whole process of finding the multiples and writing down all the multiplications of these two numbers, and we ended up with 60. Well, watch this. If I just times my 10 times six, what do I get? That's right, I get 60. So I didn't need to do this whole multiplication step. I can simply just multiply my two denominators together and I'm going to get a common multiple because 10 times six is always gonna be a number that's in both the 10 times table and the six times table. So 10 times six is 60. So I now have my denominator of 60. And the question I'm now gonna ask myself is, how did I get from 10 to 60? What do I need to do to get from 10 to 60? 10 times something equals 60. Well, 10 times six equals 60. Therefore, whatever I do to the bottom, I must do to the top, and three times six is 18. Now I can look at the other side, and I can say, right, how did I get from six 
to 60. 6 times something equals 60. Well, 6 times 10 equals 60. Therefore, 5 also must be multiplied by 10, and it becomes 50 sixtieths. Now I'm at a point where I can start to answer this. And the question now says 18 sixtieth plus 50 sixtieths. And I know that I'm working in sixtieths, so my answer is going to be sixtieths. And 18 plus 58 is 68. But let's have a look at our steps. And again, I can see that I found the common denominator. I renamed the fraction. I added the numerators, but I've not yet simplified if needed. So how can I simplify 68? Well, I can see straight away that we have a common multiple. And an easy common multiple to see is 2. So I can divide by 2, both of these. And 68 divided by 2 leaves me 34. And 60 divided by 2 is 30. But again, I can see that I can actually simplify this even further because I can still divide this by 2. 34 divided by 2 is 17 and 30 divided by 2 is 15. Now this is quite common when I'm adding up, as we can see already, to end up with an improper fraction, a fraction with a bigger numerator than denominator. That's why in a previous video we've learned how to convert from improper to mixed number. If you haven't done that, go check that out because we're going to do this quite quickly now. So I've got 17 fifteenths and I can divide my 17 by 15 and realize that I've got one whole and then I've got two remainder, so it's fifteenths. 1 and 2 fifteenths. Can I simplify that even more? No, because the only common factors are 1. So my answer to this question is 1 and 2 fifteenths. Okay, let's use our new skills now for question 3 and let's do this super quickly. So I'm not going to bother working out the multiples. All I'm going to do is 8 times 4 and 8 times 4 is 32. So I've got my two new denominators and now I need to just simply work out how I got from 4 to 32. 4 times something equals 32, and I now know that it's going to be 8. So I now need to do 2 times 8, which is 16. 16, 32 is my equivalent fraction to 2 quarters. On the other side, how did I get from 8 to 32? Well, I times it by 4, and therefore I now need to times my 3 by 4, and that equals 12. Beautiful. So I now have new fractions that I can add. So I have 12 32s add 16 32s so, so 12 add 16 equals 28 and I was working in 32s so 28 32s can I simplify this fraction even more yes I think I can because I can divide it by 2 so I could go 14 sixteenths can I go even further yes to 7 eighths can I go even further? No, the only common factor would be one. So my final answer is seven eighths, a nice clean one. Okay, there we go, three questions successfully answered. Let's look back at our things to remember, our steps. First step is to find a common denominator. We're gonna use our equivalent fraction skills to do that. Then we're gonna rename the fraction. Then we're gonna add the numerators and then we're going to simplify if needed, and if we're in an improper fraction, convert it to a mixed number using our new skills on that as well. So there we go, nice and simple. So I've got four questions for you now to work on. Put your answer in the comment section. I'm going to do my best to answer every single one. So press pause on the video now, answer these questions, and I'll get back to you in a minute. Good luck. Okay guys, well done today. Hopefully this video was useful for you. If it was, please think about liking and subscribing the channel or check out our website www.themathsguide.com for even more content and resources. See you in another video guys. Peace out.